Have you ever lost someone you really loved? Grieving is one of the most difficult emotions that many people experience. But think about how complex it becomes when suicide is involved. According to Statistics Canada, the death rate by suicide in British Columbia is roughly 500 per year, which is more than motor vehicle accident at 315. Yet, we hear about motor vehicle accident quite often, but we don't hear about suicide, even though the death rate is nearly 40% higher. Why do you think it is? There's a long history of stigmatizing people who are involved in any way with suicide. People who die by suicide, people who attempted suicide and survived attempt, and people who lost their loved one by suicide. Misunderstanding and ignorance are the root of the stigma and bringing unbelievable suffering on suicide survivors and bereaved ones. Today, I'd like to share my very personal story, how suicide loss impacted my life, how I got through, and hopefully this can help to, to reduce the stigma around suicide. Both of my parents passed away young. My, my father, by medical accident at the age of 39, when I was four, his doctor simply made a mistake on his medication for fever, and within 10 days, his healthy and strong body declined to the point of death. My mother became a young widow with three little girls, and she raised us on her own. Despite the difficulties, she was always joyful, energetic, and uplifting until she developed the bipolar disorder. In the winter, when I was 25, my ordinary morning became extraordinary. My life turned upside down because my beloved mother took her own life. Few days prior, her depression was so bad that she couldn't even get off the couch. But the day before, she was feeling well enough to go on a short trip by train with me. And after we came back from the tri trip, she was feeling so well that making phone calls to her friends and telling them that my depression finally lifted. I'm so happy that I'm coming to the meeting tomorrow. So see you then. She looked really happy, but how would I know she was feeling well or it was just another bipolar routine? The very next day, when I woke up on a, on, in that fateful morning, I felt like I need to check my mom. So I went to her room, and bed was empty. So from there, I looked down the hallway, and kitchen light was on. I didn't see her, but I thought, good, she's up and cooking breakfast. So I turned around, took a shower, and practiced piano for 20 minutes, which was my morning routine. I finished practicing piano and came back out from the room, and then I saw her standing at the end of the hallway. So I said, good morning but she didn't respond. So I thought maybe she's making phone call. But as I took a few steps closer, that's when I realized there was this much space between her feet and a floor. And then I gasped and my time stopped for a moment. But first thing I thought was, my sister with Down syndrome must not see this. Fortunately, she was still sleeping, but I knew right away that this could cre create the serious damage on her. So I was like, I gotta take her down and quietly look for scissors. And as I cut the cord, we both fell on the floor. And then I shook her body and tried to wake her. And then screaming that voice, my sister woke up. I could still remember her terrified, sleepy and terrified eyes. I made a phone call to ambulance, and I tried the CPR, and I phoned again and telling them, you gotta hurry, she's not bringing hurry. And then finally, ambulance came, and they took all of us to the hospital. At the hospital, the doctor told me, 
that she didn't make it. I was like, no, she was well last night. And she was going to go to a meeting this morning, and now she's gone. I was very confused. But I made a phone call to my relatives who live close to by, and then I phoned another other sister who had to take an airplane to get to me. The very same morning, before announced to anyone else, we agreed to hide the truth. If anyone asked us what had happened, we decided to say that it was massive heart attack, and I found her on the floor in the morning. We made up the story that was far from the truth, and why did we do it? It was because of the stigma that was wrapped around suicide. Perhaps it was the best decision we could have made because it did protect me from the negative judgment in a small community, but it did leave me long years of pain trapped inside of me. Probably not just me, my sister, my uncles, auntie all suffered, but we never shared because we decided not to talk about it. For 10 years, I didn't speak about it. But in the meanwhile, I suffer with the PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress dis disorder. The flashbacks, nightmares, sleepless nights, and anxieties. And I continued to blame myself and felt guilty. What if studied about depression? What if I knew anything about bipolar disorder? What if I supported her more? Or she might not have died if I didn't practice piano in that morning. All kinds of what ifs. I didn't know how to deal with it, and how could I ask for help without talking about it? The only comfort that I had was the fact that my mother was listening to my piano for her moments. Eventually, PTSD became a normal thing to me, even though my life was very happy with my loving husband and three beautiful children. But one day, for the first time in 10 years, I decided to speak the truth with my good friend Chiho. As I spoke, my voice and body were shaking to the degree that I've never experienced. And it was so obvious that Chiho said, you don't have to speak about it. But I said, if it's okay for you, may I continue? As I spoke, it was like my time flew back to 10 years ago. What I saw, what I heard, what I smelled, what I felt, what I thought was all as if, as, as if I was standing in the morning, that horrendous morning. But after I spoke everything, I felt so much lighter. And that time was the first time that I finally realized this is what I need to do. So I started to speak about it here and there whenever I have a comfortable situation. As I share my experience, there's positive and negative reactions from the people. Most of the people didn't know what to say, but they thanked me for sharing. But some people told me that basically my mother would never be in heaven because she took her own life. Years went by, I decided to join Chilliwack Hospice Society. My intention was to offer Reiki session, which is a Japanese method of energy healing technique for palliative care patients and their families. But through that involvement, I found out about this new bereavement group that was specific for suicide loss. By this time, it's been 16 years since my mother passed away, and I, I was no longer suffering with PTSD, and I, I was sure I was over with my grieving. So I decided to join this group as a co-facilitator, volunteer co-facilitator. I was so keen on helping others, but at the same time, this was my very first bereavement group that I joined in my life. There's the people who lost their parents, partners, children, siblings, friends, all by suicide. And there's even people who found their loved one's dead body, just like I did. 
I was very surprised to see so many people shared my experience. And for the first time, I felt like I'm not alone. There's people actually understand my pain. But remember, I said I was over with my grieving, but through this group, I found out I was wrong. Through this group, I regress, six, I regress back to 16 years, and then PTSD came back. By this time, not only grieving, guilt, and shame, but there's a new kind of shame was creating from inside. It's like, it's been 16 years. You shouldn't be grieving about your mom. It's in the past, you get over it. You're supposed to helping people. You can't cry in front of the people. It's discouraging. It was even more complex. My grieving process became this long because I didn't allow myself to have a healthy grieving stage at the beginning. So I decided to face my emotion with honesty. And you know what happened? My nightmare changed to a good dream. I used to have a really bad dream that my mom would show up in a dream and stood there, her eyes would be filled with, with guilt, and then she would turn around without saying anything. I would try to chase after her and never being able to catch her. And then I ended up waking up in the middle of the night crying. But that changed. For example, my mom would come and visit me from Japan and then to Canada and I, I would take her on tour in Vancouver. We would sit in a Stanley Park, and we would take a selfie photo, <laughs> and then I would say, look, this is a good one. I'm gonna put it on a Facebook, okay? And then I would be on the iPhone, and I would type, mother and daughter reunite, dot, dot, smile. Just like the way that I would spend my time with her, if she were still here. So this, facing the emotion with honesty, this did, this did it for me. Now in closing, I would like to speak to those people who are never being affected by suicide, and also for those who have. First, people who are unfamiliar with suicide loss. Suicide is not recognized as much as, much as those the other type of the death, as a result, it is often hidden. Please know that we, as a suicide grievers, suffer with the grieving as much as those people who lost their loved one by illness, accidents, tragic death, old ages. But we also suffer with a complex sets of emotion. It's hard enough to lose loved one and feeling sadness emptiness, shock. But here comes heavy guilt, shame, blame, trauma, and topped with stigma and taboo to deal with. Please do not brand suicide as selfish. With my understanding, depression is like a cancer in their heart. Many people can survive, but Unfortunately, some people cannot survive, that, but that doesn't mean that they were selfish. They didn't want to end their lives, but they were in so much pain that they just wanted to end their pain. And now, those people who are affected by suicide. Speaking helps. It might take you three years, 10 years, or 20 years until you are able to speak about your experience. But please know that speaking can be one of the powerful tools to advance your grieving from unbearable to bearable. Once you are able to speak about your experience without crying, then you know your heart is mending. And let's talk about their lives, not just the death. So then you know that they were so filled with life. I just know that there will be a time for you that sadness turns into strength. Grieving and guilt 
will turn into gratitude. Anger and disappointment will be in the past and replaced by peace. May all of us have a strength to face difficulties and speak about them so that we can empower ourselves, others, and them.